was born up in Tigoni, near the Muru now, uh, with no Christian background. I attended uh, what you call, uh, uh, it used to be called at that time, uh, Church of Scotland School, present day Presbyterian in Gedega. And um, I was interested in religion. And uh, the, the nearest book I found concerning God was the Bible. Not only did I used to read it, but I read it to the people in the village. So I was already a Christian by in heart because I carried the Bible anyhow. <laughs> I came to know the bishop through the auxiliary bishop of Nairobi, uh, Bishop David Kamaunganga, who is a personal friend and a friend of my family. And he approached me and he told me they feel as a circle of friends would want then a bishop, John Joseph Njenga, to write his memoirs. And he told me, I know you, and I know your style of writing, and I like the way you write, and I know your in-depth knowledge of how the church works, and I think you're the right person to work on this biography. I had never before done a biography of a bishop, let alone a priest. I had never known bishop before. I knew him through my father because he married my parents. And I always saw the marriage certificate, there was a signature of the bishop. That time is Father Njenga, John Jenga. But little did I know how history works, how nature works, how grace works, that one time I'll be called upon to really write the memoirs of the man who married my parents and baptized my two sisters. And after talking, I asked him whether he understands how an honest biography works. And I explained to him, and one of the things I told him, he must be ready that his critics in the clergy, uh, in the clergy class and also in the laity will be interviewed to bring a wider and a fuller perspective of his biography. And he said he was ready. And I really asked him, um, Your Grace, they might say things you may not like. And he told me, look, I've been in leadership, church leadership, for so long, and I've encountered tougher things, and I've lived through them. You see, when you're writing a biography of someone, you enter into their private life. You come to know them much more deeply or deeper than an ordinary person. First and foremost, he had a very beautiful sense of humor. He, he would, I remember when we were doing the book, he would joke and say, I said, make sure I sell all those books to the ladies. And I'll tell him, Father, I would, uh, Bishop, I would try and sell to the ones who will want. He said, they have to want to buy my book. And we really had a good uh, laugh with him. And the meetings were very, very vibrant and very comfortable. And we. And we knew for sure that once the books come out, they'll be, they'll be sold. His sense of humor was just um, out of this world. He was like a father to me. It was his autobiography. It had a lot about the parishes he went and, the, and where he went and how he came to about to sitting down and writing this book. It was a very interesting book. It had a lot of um, uh, stories, chapters about how he became a priest and how he really wanted to be a priest. And at one point, I remember, he said, um, he, he's aiming for to go up and up, and truly to his word, he became actually the Archbishop of Mombasa. My 
My names are Reverend Father Venant Mwazumbi Mwashuma. I am a Catholic priest from the Archdiocese of Mombasa. I was ordained in the year 10th August 2002 by His Grace Emeritus John Jenga. I first met Archbishop when I was a student in the minor seminary in the year 1990 and since then he has been visiting our seminary every year and I used to admire his uh, humor while he preaching and uh, he was very kind and I could remember after the mass I used to follow him and greet him and kiss his ring and uh, one day I told him I also want to become a priest to pray for me and he said sure sure I'll, he'll pray for me and he made a joke that at that time I was very tiny, I was very slender and he told me if I don't put on weight I may not become a priest. I, told, I promised him I'll put on weight to become a priest and we laughed and he said no it's okay, you can become a priest, don't worry. Uh, Archbishop encouraged me so much, he was very humor and uh, very straightforward and uh, down to earth and humble and also he could tell you what is happening with you, he could never hide anything, if it's a mistake he could tell you this is a mistake, but at the end of the day, he will tell you, I have forgiven you because you are son of Abraham. He also had a lot of love for the priesthood. If there is a man who loved priesthood, it's him. And remember, he didn't join priesthood out of frustration. He was in a very prestigious school, Mango High School, by merit. And in his year, he was the best student nationally. And he was admitted that time to Makerere University to study medicine. And he opted for Kibosho Seminary in Tanzania. He chose the priesthood for a prestigious profession like medicine because he believed he was called for the people of God. His Grace, Most Reverend Archbishop John Jenga Emeritus, Archbishop of Mombasa, uh, to us was a uh, was a father. Like, I grew up knowing him, uh, dating back in 1964-65. The role he played in my life, I would say that uh, he's a mentor. He was iconic, I would say. A person you look up to when you need help. He will come in when even the family is short of funds to educate us, and he would come out to assist wherever he could. My wife, uh, was in, I introduced her to him when we were getting married and uh, he officiated in our wedding in 1990 at uh, St. Joseph Catholic Church in Jericho and he also baptized all our children, all of them. We've known him in a very special way and to us we really lost somebody who would say that uh, played a very big role in the development of the church in Kenya and also making Christians come together in family life. I met the bishop when I got married to George and to me I would actually say he's like my matrimonial father because I depended on him in everything and for everything after I got married matters to do with you know marriage life family issues he had an open mind and he encouraged us to always whenever we felt like we have a problem or we felt like things are not adding up he always encouraged us to talk to him. To me, he was more than a father. He was very simple, by the way, and very, also very humorous. <laughs> he baptized my daughter in this house, and he was very joyful yeah, all the time. And even when he would now come to the parish to, to give confirmations when he was retired here in Nairobi, he would always interact with him. And him. I got to know him as a very jovial person very spiritual person. The fact that he would uh, relate to people, relate to people and could say people should s s stay together. The three perspectives really touched my heart. One of it was his deep faith in God. Remember traveling with him on air to Kisumu. We had to connect to Kisumu, then we go to Kakamega and we had some mishap in the air and the pilot announced that he could not land and he wasn't sure how he's going to land. You can imagine the commotion that was in the plane. And I was struck. And then I looked on Jenga. He was reading the breviary, the prayer of the church, and perturbed. 
And I was really, really stuck by that. He was the only person on the plane who was calm. By the grace of God, everything came back to normalcy. And I remember him looking at me eyeball to eyeball and telling me, young man, when you trust the Lord, everything works for you. Even if we go out for a very heavy day, confirmation, or it was wedding, it was a diocese celebration, we come very late. But at the end of the day, we must go to the chapel and to pray. And his format was, we begin with the rosary and then we finish with divine praises. So there was never a day we could say, now today, because we are tired, we cut it short. So we have to recite the rosary. He was in love with Mother Mary so much. Even when we were traveling, we have to pray as many rosaries as possible. One thing I will take personally from his life is the bishop was very prayerful. He loved saying the rosary. Many times I traveled with him in the car, we would say the rosary and also uh, sing the Marian songs. He had a big heart to forgive. He would talk about forgiveness and forgiveness. Maybe there is wrong overtaking on the road and he would say, no, just forgive him. Uh, just forgive him. Give him time. We shall make it. So it is that humility in the bishop and the prayerfulness. Things I remember with joy deeply in my heart is that my own personal relation with Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. That has kept me going up to the present day. He was truly a mentor. He was truly uh, a man of God and uh, God-fearing. And I think, and I know he's in heaven. My name is Virginia Kabugu. I have known the Archbishop all my life. Uh, before I was born, my dad was working for him. He was his driver back in Eldoret for about 30 years. So when I was born, that's when I came to know him. He has educated me. He has been there with me. I have lived with him in Mombasa and in Nairobi when he retired. He has been like a father to me. He educated me up to college and he celebrated my all my achievements. He celebrated, he celebrated my birthday. He celebrated when I graduated. He baptized our children. We have three children. He's been there with me all along. And uh, from the day he retired, I've been with him also. We've visited him every month. We come from us. We've been coming from us every month since the time he was staying in his house and up to the time he moved to to the clergy home. I went to the Catholic school in Yoki where I, I was interested in learning the catechism. I know something about Christianity. And it's there that I was baptized by the late Father Austin Lynch and um, I was very happy. It is through that background that Christ called me and the uh, at some, some stage, the priest asked me, would you like to become a priest? Well, I said, if I say I don't become a priest, he might send me out of school. So I said, yes. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. But I think he could see some soft qualities in me. Something also which changed my life was uh, traveling by air. Since I was born, I had not traveled by air. But one day he told me, you need to learn to travel by air so that at least one day you'll tell God, you came near him, but you never came near him. You, you were just passing. So he, he paid my air ticket. I came to Nairobi by air. And then finally, he organized for me trips. I went to Italy. I've gone to Italy twice, America with him, as he was celebrating his fifth priest anniversary. I have also traveled to German and to Malta. So I want to thank him in a very special way how he used to change people's life, and more so, he changed my life. Praying. So I joined them, we pray together. So we really pray for his grace that his soul may rest in peace. And we miss him because he really catered and cared for the children who had no one to care for them. And we'd like to continue with what he started. We are in this group called Archbishop Jenga Club. We want to continue with the good work he had started of caring and educating the children who have no one to take care of them.